Hey, what's up everybody? It's Indigo and you're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So in this video, I'm going to be adding the Stripe payments to our e-commerce app. So what that means is on our products right now, we have the price already. We have everything set up. The only thing that we don't have is a button to buy the product. So that's what I'm gonna be building. So let's just get right into it. So I already have the app started and the server is running. If you need to get this app, then go into the description and go and clone the latest repo. Although by then, I'll probably have already built this button, but it's okay, still download it. If you wanna use this app, if you wanna like mess with it, I recommend that. But let's just get right into this. So I'm gonna open up the code in the code editor. I'm just gonna do that by typing code dot. And just like that, we're inside of our app. Then what I'm gonna do is go over to the product show page and right underneath the price. So right here, where I'm showing the product price. I'm just gonna make a new line and I'm gonna do a link to buy now. Now this, uh, we don't have a path yet, so I'm just gonna use the pound sign and I can do some styling. So I was thinking like rounded large, maybe font semi bold, P2. I was kind of thinking, for some reason I was thinking a yellow button. Let's just see how this looks. So I added a little bit of styling. Oh, and make sure to close off that link. I'm gonna go ahead and reload. Oh, <laughs> syntax error. So, oh, I forgot the colon on the class. So let's fix that. Oh, now we have a little buy now button. That wasn't really what I was expecting though. I think I wanna have it on the next line down. So to do that, I can just add another BR. That should work for now. It'll push it down. Although now the styling is kind of conflicting with the green button even with the BR, which is kind of annoying. So maybe what we'll do is we'll add a class of flex, flex call, and then we'll just do some gap. See how that looks. So now we're like actually separating each element, which I'm cool with, but you'll see that the buttons now, the styling gets kind of messed up with flex call. So we have to actually add margin right auto on both of our little badges. All right, now we get something that looks like this. What I want to do is I want to make this button like larger, wider, so let's try to work on that. Maybe I can give it a fixed width, like a width 32. Let's see how that looks. All right, we're getting somewhere. How about width 64? Reload. Okay, I think I'm cool with that. And then we could do padding four instead of two. And then we could just do text center and then make the text larger by doing like text XL. And there we go. This is kind of more what I was thinking. Just a giant buy now button. Makes it really easy for the user and also it kind of reminds me of Amazon. We might also want to have a hover state. So let me add like hover. We could go BG yellow a little bit lighter or we could go darker either way. Actually, I think let's start with the 400 and then we'll go to 500 when you hover. Cause 500 is a little bit darker. And I think it should be like the buy now button should be bright and poppy. And it already is. So look at this. This is awesome. So now when you click buy now, I want to bring us to the purchase page, which we're going to need to create a route for that. So let's just start off. We're going to do this by hand. We're not going to be doing a generator. So what I'll do is I'll go over to the config folder and the routes.rb. And inside of here, I need to add that buy now route. So what I'll do is I'll nest it inside of products. So I'm going to add a do resources products do, which means our buy now link would have the product param they would have all of this in the URL and it would just be like slash buy now. So what, all we have to do is add a resource. We can call it buy now. So you need a colon. So just like this, add a resource buy now. We're only going to need a show action. And then I'm also going to set the controller because by default, it would try to do a plural like buy now's controller. <laughs> and I just want to do a singular buy now controller. So now what we need is we actually need to create that controller in the app controllers folder. We're going to create a new file and we can call that buy now controller.rb. I'm going to create the class, which is going to match the name of the file. And this class is going to inherit from the application controller, like always, like the rest of our controllers. And then inside of it, we're just going to have that show action. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to set the product from the param so we could do at product equals product that finds and then we'll pass in the params product id 
just like this. So now we're going to have the product available and we would show like the payment page right there. So the last thing we can do is set up the view. So simply go over to the views folder, create a new folder called buy now, and then make a file called show.html.erb to match the method name in the controller. And then boom, just like this, this is going to be where all your HTML is. So for right now, let's just add like an H1. We'll say like, this is the buy now page. Now we can check if this all works. So the last thing we actually need to do is uh, update the URL. Cause right now, oh, whoops. It looks like there was actually a problem in the routes real quick, like a syntax issue. Oh, yo, I keep forgetting the colon. Excuse me guys. Uh, I don't think I've been coding like in a few days. So I <laughs> also the MacBook keyboard is kind of like glitchy and sticky, but I forgot the colon on the controller. Let me fix that. There we go. What I was going to say is when you click on the buy now, you'll see that the URL is still pointing to the pound sign. So that's the last thing we need to do is change the route to the correct route. Now, what I'm going to do to find out the route, we can run the rails routes command, which will show us all of the routes in our application. And then if you scroll up, we should be able to find the route. So it's the product by now. So it's just like this. We can take that and we can go over to the show page the product show page. Let's go over here, products show. Now go over to the link for buy now and we're gonna replace this pound sign with the actual path helper. So it was product underscore buy underscore now underscore. Then you have to add path on it to turn it into a path. And then what all we have to do is pass in the product just like this. And this should be all good to go. So we can go ahead and reload our page. And now when we click buy now, bam, it actually brings us to, this is the buy now page. So just as simple as that, you can add in custom routes like this. I was really excited when I first learned this as a developer, because I was like, whoa, you can have routes for everything. Also guys, I'm, once we get into like turbo hotwire features, what I love to do is just have like a controller like this with a create action where you're going to like post there, save some, do some sort of processing and then turbo stream back. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Anyways, let's start installing the buy now page. So what I want to do is I want to like display some stuff about the product and then just have the stripe form at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do the styling first. So let's go to that buy now show page and start styling this up a little bit. So I think the first thing I'll do is just show, actually, you know what? Let's keep the H1. Let's just put the product name there. So we'll just print out at product dot name reload and this is the product name and i might actually take the styling like that same old kind of header styling that we've been using around the app why don't i just reuse that so i'll copy it from here this is pretty easy i think i'm going to add text center so it centers itself reload although the centering doesn't seem to be working all right let's try to add a div around all of this let's just do with full Flex, flex call, item center. So what this is gonna do is gonna center all the elements inside of this div. And then we can do some padding top eight just to push everything down a little bit. And then close off that div. Now when we reload, we'll see our text is right in the center. Now underneath that, the name of the product, I'm going to display like the main picture. So we can just get product.images first, if product.images.any. Actually, we're, we want to put this into an image tag. So image tag for that first image like this. And then we can add a class to set some styling. So stuff like a fixed width. I might do like a max width 2XL with full height, some sort of fixed height. And then object cover to make sure that it stays within these bounds. And we can reload. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Just like a little small image I can even add rounded large if i want to have the rounded on the edges which i kind of like and yeah i mean this is cool this is cool you know what maybe we should do like side by side for for website because the right side will have the payment form and the left side we can have like all of this information so to do that let's just add another div on the outside it's going to be div class grid grid calls two 
So it's going to add two grid columns. We'd have our first div would be on the left side, as you can see, and the second div would be on the right side. Now to make this mobile friendly, we need to add a breakpoint. So on the grid calls to add this medium breakpoint. And now it'll go back, it'll like stack them on top of each other for mobile. And we could probably also not do padding on mobile because it looks like it's a little bit too much. If I reload, okay, that's a little bit better. And then on the full screen on the desktop, we would see something more like this. We could also display the description on the bottom. Why don't we just go ahead and do that? So what I'll do actually, I'll go to the product show page and just take whatever styling I had for it here. Copy it over just like that. Actually, I don't really like that. Let me add, because I want to have it be the same max width for the image. So why don't we take this max width and stick it outside? Why don't we stick it on the main, or maybe not there, maybe like a sub. Yeah, let's do a sub container. Max width 2XL width full. This should work a little bit better, although I still want to style that description. Reload. Okay, now the at least the text is the same as the image. But I probably want to make this like text large. Instead of gray 700, let's try to find something that likes that works better with the background color. Like maybe light text. Yeah, I think light text actually kind of works. And if we wanted to, we could do some padding. I kind of like it fitting. You know, I'll do margin to push it like a little bit off of the image. Because right now it's like right onto the image. So if we did margin top four, it would at least give like a little bit of space. And all right, this looks good. Now to display the Stripe form next to it. Uh, well, we're first going to have to install Stripe into our app. Well, I say install. It's really just adding a gem, setting the credentials. And yeah, like putting the keys into the app. So the first thing you need is to have a Stripe account. So if you don't already, go to stripe.com and create your account. Now Stripe is the platform that I use just because it's pretty easy to use with Rails. They have good documentation, they have a gem, but I have been getting suggestions to use other platforms and show you guys how to do it. So I'm definitely gonna do that pretty soon. Just try to experiment with more platforms. But for right now and for this video, I'm gonna use Stripe. So if you guys are cool with that, then just follow along and we're gonna build something awesome. So what I'm gonna do now is, now that we're inside of Stripe, I'm gonna go and right click, or I guess left click, up into this corner and I'm gonna create a new account. And then inside of here, we're gonna have to put the name of our account. Which for me, it's just gonna be e-commerce rails. And I'm gonna create this account right here. All right, cool. So now what you get is you get this publishable key and the secret key. That's all we're gonna need for our app. So I'm gonna set these into the app right now. To do that, I'm going to go into the console and we're going to do the rails credentials colon edit commands and then set the environment to development by doing dash dash environment equals development. Now you also need to set the editor. So whichever editor you want to use for editing this credential file, you have to set through this param. So for me, I'm just going to use Vim, but I know for beginners, Vim can be kind of annoying. It's like weird. I think you could also do code. Let's try to use code, which is going to be like VS code. Just so I can show you guys, hopefully this will work fine. And press enter. It says, okay, open. So now we, sh <laughs> we should be inside of it, but I don't really know. Let's try. So I'm going to add a stripe key. I'm going to add a colon. And then inside of there, I'm going to do a nested for a public key. And I'm going to copy that value and then go and paste it into this file. So you'll see we have a PK key and then right next to it, I'm going to do SK for the secret key. So I can go back to Chrome. I'm going to reveal the test key, copy it. Whoops. And I'm just going to paste it in here to our file. So now we should have this. All we need to do is save the file and exit out of it. Now, I don't really know if that worked with code because usually I do it with Vim. So let me go and try to go into it in Vim and see if it saved correctly. Oh, it didn't work. That's so annoying. Yeah, that didn't work guys. So don't do that. That's weird. I guess you can't use VS code to, to mess with the credential file. Let me look that up. Can you use VS code 
to edit credentials file rails. It says, since Rails credentials edit looks at the editor variable, we set it to code dash dash wait. This instructs our command to use VS code to edit our secrets. So you need to have the dash dash wait part. I'm confused. So launch VS code and do it in the command palette. Oh, okay. Let's try it just for you guys. Let's try it. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to try to open. What was it like system commands? What the heck? What did he say? He said, open the command palette and type shell commands. Okay. Shell commands. I clicked it. Oh, so that's what that's how you install it. But the problem is it still didn't save after I saved my code. Let me try to use the code dash dash wait. So I'll put this in parameters and I'll use dash dash wait. Let's see, does that do anything different? Okay, it actually does work. because I can tell it works because we see this comment, which kind of shows like, okay, it is working. So let's do this again. We'll add the stripe, we'll add the PK. Let me go and co copy that publishable key, paste it in here. And we'll do the SK for secret key. Copy that in, whoops. And now I think hopefully I can just exit out and it should have saved, right? Yep, it says file encrypted and saved. So I think everything's good. Now from here, we just need to set up the embedded checkout. So to do that, I'm just gonna look up Stripe embedded checkout docs to find the example that we can use. So I'm gonna use the embedded form just like this. So the first thing we need to do is, oh, right here, gem install stripe. So let's go ahead and do that. We're not gonna do gem install, we're gonna do bundle add stripe to add the stripe gem to our gem file. We also need to set the credentials. So I'm gonna create an initializer. To do that, go over to the config folder, then there's an initializers uh, folder too. Now this is where all of like your stuff gets initially set when you start your Rails app. So what we'll do is we'll create a new file and call it stripe.rb. And then we're gonna wanna set the stripe API key to Rails, I forget, I forget any Rails, is it application credentials or? I'm kinda lost right now. Rails credentials dig stripe pk. No, I think it's rails.application.credentials. I guess I haven't done this in like a few days. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's go. Let's do Rails console and then try to do this. All right, that worked. So yeah, we're going to set the API key like so. Just like they do in here, but instead of doing it there, we're just going to do it, you know, inside of an initializer to make it a little bit easier. So the next thing that we do is we need to create a Stripe checkout session. So this would happen in our back end and we'd send this over to the front end. So we're really what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a stimulus controller that makes a request to the back end to get this checkout session ID, the client secret. So this it, this will make it secure because you don't want your front end to have to like use the, the secret key, for example. You don't wanna ever expose this to, your, to anybody and the front end always exposes anything. You can't hide stuff in the front end. It's just a fact. You can try but it really like overall it's hackable compared to backends. All right, so let's just get started. I think I'll get started in the HTML. So let's go back to the buy now show page. And then outside of this div, we need to create our other div, right? So just like this, and you know what? I'm gonna add the data controller, Stripe checkout. This is gonna be a controller that I'm gonna create. We're gonna create a stimulus controller stripe checkout. To do that, we'll go into the console and run Rails G stimulus stripe dash checkout command. Just like this. Now we have a stripe checkout controller inside of here. So we could just console log like hello stripe checkout. And if we reload our page, We'll be able to see that inside of the console. 
reload. Yep, hello from Stripe checkout. So that's where our JavaScript is going to happen. So if we go over to checkout.js in the example, we need something that looks like this in our stimulus controller. So I'm just going to copy this over, replace the comment. So we need a, a function that's an async function that's going to make a post to our server, get the client secret, then it's going to initialize Stripe and it's going to mount it. All right, so first of all, we need to add async, the keyword to our connect function. And then for checkout mount, instead of using an ID, we can just mount it onto this dot element, which is the element that your stimulus controller is on. Now, the last thing is for fetch. I don't actually wanna use fetch. Instead, I'm going to use request.js. The reason being is because Rails uses a CSRF token to make sure that the requests in your app are coming like from inside of your app. And request.js takes care of doing, of like configuring that for you. So to use request.js, all we have to do is go into the console, do a dot slash bin, import map pin, and it's gonna be at rails slash request.js, request.js. Wait, how do you spell request? I think it's like this, rails request.js. All right, so now we have request.js. Back in the stimulus controller, up at the top, I'm gonna import the post method from at rails slash request.js, just like this. And then down here in here, we're gonna replace fetch with post. Now for the URL, I'm just gonna pass this into the, through the stimulus. So I'm gonna use this.url value, and I'm gonna define our static values at the top of the file or inside of, actually at the top of the controller class. So it has to be inside of here. And if you don't know about the values, API and stimulus, there is some docs, but I'll probably make a video on this soon, like just doing a overview of stimulus because I feel pretty comfortable with it. We can also get rid of this whole like posting thing. All we actually need to do is just post to the URL. We're gonna get our checkout session back and then we're gonna return the client secret yeah, so the, the stimulus should be good. We don't need to mess with this anymore. It should work. Now let's just go back to the HTML where we're going to have to pass in the URL. So we can do that by typing data stripe checkout dash URL value. And then we have to put the route. Now, right now we don't have a route for this for like our session creation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define it by going to config routes.rb. And we need either another controller or we could just do it on buy now. I think I'll just do it on buy now by adding a create method inside of here. This will automatically use a post request or like by default, I guess it will use a post request. So then we can go to the controllers buy now controller and just define that create action. Now, what I want to do is I want to add this setting of the product into a before action just so I don't have to have like repetitive code in each, in each method. So I'm gonna take that code, I'm gonna go up to the top, add a before action, set product. And let's add a private section at the bottom. And we'll make our method set product. And we'll just move this code to set this at product. So now we have it available in both of these actions. All right, so now for the create action, we're actually gonna have a little bit of code. That's where we're gonna take the server code. I'll just copy all of this, plop it in here. Just like that. All right, so what we're doing is we're creating this Stripe session checkout session and we're setting some line items. So by default, it's gonna use like this price ID, which is a pre-configured price in Stripe. Now, there's a few ways we could do this in our app. We could have the product create a price on the Stripe side. But the problem with that is then every time you update your product, you'd also have to send a request to Stripe to update that price. It can be kind of tricky. So usually what I like to do is I found a workaround. I'm going to pull up the Airbnb code for an example. So I'm going to go over to Airbnb Rails. And let's look for our checkout session controller. Might have been, which one would it be? Bookings controller. Yeah, look, we have a Stripe session method. 
So I found the workaround. So the workaround is adding price data hash. So instead of having a price, you have price data where you can dynamically create like the price by passing in the currency, the unit amount, and then any sort of product data that you want to display. So for us, like the name, it would be nice to pass at product dot name. And then this will show up inside of the form for the unit amount. What we're going to do is we're going to take the price and we have to convert it to integers. So the way that Stripe works, it doesn't use decimals. It doesn't use the cents. It actually expects you to multiply everything by 100. So like for a $10 product, instead of writing 10, it would actually be uh, a thousand, if that makes sense. Uh, because because a hundred would be one dollar. So it's like by cents, basically. So for us, if we have some product that is uh, like what, $30, I think we just multiply it by a hundred. So we do like this product that price times a hundred and then we have to convert it to integer. So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses, multiply by hundred, turn to integer. All right. So this should be good. The last thing is the return URL. We need somewhere for the user to go like after, oh, also this is not rails right here. <laughs> this was like for their other framework. So actually we have to do render JSON instead. And now this is good, but the return URL is where we're going to like where the user is going to end up after they finish paying. Right. So we might just have some sort of like success route. Let's try roads to RB. Um, so we could probably add a new, another method onto buy now if we wanted to just keep it like in the same controller. So we can add a do block and then I'm going to do a get success on think on collection. I think you can just do this and it should create the success route. Let's go ahead and check rails routes again and see what our routes are looking like. See if everything looks good. All right, so we have a success product by now path. So that's what we'll use. And all we need is we need a success method inside of this by now controller. We also need a view by now, create a new file called success HTML to ERB inside of here. Be like, congrats, you bought the product. Now, obviously, I will style this up in a second. Right now, that's good. Now, in the return URL, we're going to. Oh, also, you're allowed to pass in like parameters, like, and you can use this checkout session ID. It'll replace this automatically with the correct set checkout session ID. And then if you want to like look up the session in that success page, I don't even care about that. So let's, we don't really need that. Let's just have the success product by now. You have to add path, pass in at product. All right, so this is good right here. Now back on the show page, we need to set that URL. So this is gonna be the uh, checkout session. So for that, it's just the create. So you'll see the post. It's literally just the same path product by now path with the app product, but it's going to make a post request. So it's going to hit a different action in the controller. And I feel like this should work. So fingers crossed, all of this coding should have worked correctly. Let's just go ahead and reload. All right, right away. I don't see anything happening. Stripe is not defined. Ah, oh, okay. This is actually something that's funny, but it's easy to miss this step in the HTML. There's actually like a script tag for Stripe JS to add Stripe. So instead of adding it with some sort of package manager, you can just do the script tag in your head. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And actually it might be a good idea not to include this on every page either. Cause that's one option. Like we could just go into layout application, shove it up here into the head or we could just yield head up here and then we can use content for to set this dynamically. So on that buy now show page, let's just go up to the top and let's do a content for head just like this. And then we can add our script tag. 
So now this would automatically get included, but only on this buy now show page, which could be kind of cool. It might speed up our app. I don't know. I'm reloading. It still says it's not defined. Oh, <laughs> maybe that maybe I didn't do this correctly. Let's go over to application. Maybe we need parentheses. No, still not working. Wait, let me check. Let me actually check the head. Is it not showing up? So you can go into the element section and just look through the head. Is it really not showing up? It says it is. Look right here. It says there's a script tag. For some reason, it might, it might not be working. Although, wait, let's check the JavaScript. I feel like that's fine, but let's check the JavaScript. Wait, Stripe. Oh, don't you need a define Stripe? Let's go back to the docs. Oh yeah, we do need to define Stripe. We need to say like const Stripe equals Stripe and then add the public key. That's funny. All right, so let's go ahead and do that at the top. Stripe and you're supposed to pass in the public key. So to get the public key, I usually just put it inside of the head. So like right here in yield head, I would just, well, it's kind of silly to like have the yield head and then, all right, let's do it in the buy now. Oh, this is kind of stupid. Like, like, so we have a meta name, straight public key content. Uh, we'll pass the actual public key by digging it out of rails application credentials.dig stripe pk for public key so now we have this meta tag now inside the javascript we would do like a document head query selector so we're going to search for that particular meta tag by doing meta name equals this particular name this is the way that you can query for like specific elements based off their parameter or off their attributes. Now we can get the content. So just like this, say let public key equals this, right? And then we define Stripe with the public key and boom, we should be good to go. If I reload, it says, please call Stripe with your publishable key. Use an empty string. No, wait, was it not able to find it? Let me console log. No, it found it. Oh, it looks like it didn't like our content for some reason. Credentials dig, weird. Let's go into the Rails console and see if we can get this. It is working here, so what the heck? It's saying that the content is nil. What the, wait, it literally is. Why isn't, why is that not working? Okay, that's kind of weird. You know what? Let's forget the content for, cause this is being weird. Forget that. All right, let's just literally put this inside of our application layout. Delete that yield head. All right, so we don't need to mess with that. Let's just put our key right in the head and our script right in the head too. Now let's reload. Still, no, it's still having the same problem. No, I swear, am I, guys, am I doing everything, anything wrong? Like, this looks right. Content equals. This should be right. Like, what the heck? Let me switch the name. Stripe PK. Maybe it... <laughs> Doesn't make sense, but what if I just change the name? Okay. Reload. No, look, we have a, we have this meta tag. Okay, I'm doing something wrong. Meta HTML. We have a name and we have content. How like how can you go wrong with that? Meta name, content. I'm so confused. Okay, what about like content one, two, three? 
now it's working content one two three but what about the freaking rails application credentials dig like why is that not working no i'm actually confused or like, what if i just print it out on the page so inside the body reload there's nothing no way oh i wonder guys i don't think i restarted the server the whole time i think that's what happened now that i think about this so when you edit something like the credentials file you actually need to restart the server and i don't think i did because i did it in a separate tab that's probably what was happening. Let me reload. Okay, now now our public key is showing up. Perfect. So it was just that small little thing where we had to reload. So now when I press buy now, look at that. The Stripe form, it's coming. Come on. It's loading. It almost seems like there's an error though. It says, fetch client secret failed. Response.json is not a function. Oh. Because in request.js, it's not a function. So let's go back to our JavaScript controller for Stripe checkout. Now for the response.json, it's not a function. It's actually just a, like a getter method kind of thing. So we have to get rid of these parentheses. That's what was causing the error. But everything else should be fine. Now let's go ahead and reload. It still says expected a JSON response, but got text plain. Oh, that's weird. Oh, it looks like inside of our app, the API call cannot be made with a publishable key. Oh, I think I set the wrong key instead of stripe.rb. Yeah, I did. I set the API key to PK, but it should have been SK for secret key. All right, so let me fix that. And then make sure to restart the server after you edit anything like an initializer. And then let's reload. It's still saying there was a server error looks like invalid URL. Oh, for the success URL, because we were passing a path. Uh, that's what's causing the error. So we have to go back to our controller, or the buy now controller. And we have to switch path out for a URL. So it'll use like the full domain, because Stripe needs that. And then when we reload, it should actually work. This is beautiful. So see, it was a little bit tricky just because like there was a few things that I was you know, missing out. But look at this. We have our whole buy now page set out. We can set the email card information. The funny thing is, I don't even think we need an email, but whatever. We might as well. And then for Stripe, you can use a test card of 4242 to have your payment go through. Stir. I don't even know. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pay. See what happens. You see the payment went through and now you get to the success page where we have this little message now this is a bit underwhelming buy now success so what i'll do is let's just go back to the buy now show page and i'm just going to copy this div with all like our information and i'll pop it right into success so right away we can have something that's kind of pretty really a little bit prettier white oversized shirt cool 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 and then right on top of that let's just have like another h1 kind of thing congrats you purchased this product congrats i don't even know what you want to say purchasing this product obviously you guys can style your message however you want it i don't even think that should be a h1 Do like a really light color let's see what that looks like congrats <laughs> this is kind of like a bit much though with the two things that's pretty huge congrats on purchasing this product white oversized hmm. <laughs> and obviously we could style this up however we want it to be like for the product name i could probably make this smaller now Actually, let's leave it how it is and let's just have like this top section uh, just take up a little bit more space like i'll add a div height 80 full margin bottom eight 
you can still have like that product info but you can kind of push it down a little bit oh that's a little bit too much space 64 and i almost want to do like a background image on this background image url we can put something in here sometimes i even like to do giphy obviously not like a trippy one but like a purchase Congrats. <laughs> or how about like, um, yeah, I think instead of saying like, congrats on purchasing the product, it could say like, thank you for purchasing. Your product will be shipped shortly. I think that could be a good message. Thank you for purchasing your product. Thank you for purchasing. That could be like the main thing. Thank you for purchasing. And then we'll have like a subtext. Put that on another line in a P. It's like so. And we'll say like your product will be shipped shortly. I think that sounds good. Yeah, that looks good. And then we could center this by doing flex, flex call, item center, the same old stuff. We can even do gap to like push the two elements apart. Oh, but I can't see this bottom text at all. So let's switch that to a really light color. There we go. Thank you for purchasing. Your product will be shipped shortly. Ooh, maybe we can just look up like shipping GIF. Or how about mail? package <laughs> no, no imagine you put like just like some dude breaking a package it's coming okay let's do this one although i don't know that that dude looks kind of i don't know i don't know if that's the people we're trying to market to maybe it's fine i think we could use this one good secured so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna press share and i'm gonna go original i'm gonna copy the gif link and I'm actually going to go to that URL and then save the image. Good secured. And then what we'll do is we'll go back into our code and I'm going to drop it into the images folder. So I can just go in here, drag over our GIF into images. And yeah, now on that success page for the background image, we can just go in here, put some Ruby code and we'll do asset path and we'll pass in the name of that file. So we can just go ahead and like copy relative path. Whoops, but all we literally all we need is just this part, the name of the file, because asset path will already take care of locating this asset. Now, when we go reload, boom, this is what we see. So it is like it's looping. If you don't want it to loop, you can add a, a class, which is like background, no repeat which tells it to not repeat which tailwind let me try to figure out that in tailwind background repeat so if you say bg no repeat <laughs> it's the same as doing this css styling let's try that out bg no repeat all right so now it doesn't repeat but now it's like only over there so we might want to do a BG cover to tell it to cover the whole thing. And yeah, like that's cool, but now you can't really see the GIF. So we might even want to make the size of this element bigger. Height 80, we still can't really see it. How about height 300 pixels? That's like the same thing. 40 view height, that might even be the same thing too. <laughs> yeah, you can't really see it that well. What is BG repeat rounds? Let's try one of these. Okay, so it only does two of them. That's interesting. I mean, yeah, you could either use that GIF or not use it. It doesn't really matter. I think I want to center this text though. So I'm going to add a justify center next to the item center. 
now our text is in the middle and yeah i think i want to switch the gif to something let's just do like anime chill gif like an anime landscape oh yeah see this would be a vibe just like some flowers so let's copy that gif link save image to downloads let's call it anime flowers i'm gonna go and add this into our app And we can just do that anime flowers dot gif reload. Oh yeah, that's see that's cute. Thank you for purchasing. Your product will be shipped shortly. Like if I saw this page, I would be pretty happy as a buyer. I'd be like, okay. Although a lot of times they show you like they'll show you a map of your house and it'll be like, we'll send it to this to like your location. Which actually we never got their shipping information now that I read. We literally didn't get their shipping information, so we might want to do that. Definitely want to do that real quick. So how do you get shipping information? I think I handled this in a previous video for the t-shirt store, but we can just simply look it up. Get shipping information with Stripe. Because we could always just have our, like a, like a secondary form where before we show the Stripe checkout, we have like a Rails form where we get their information. But there's also a way that you can just do it with the Stripe checkout. So it says pass the shipping address parameter. So let's look for that shipping address parameter right here. Let's try to figure out where it is. Shipping, no, that's not right. So I guess you just pass this in, it's going to be a hash and you have to say the allowed countries, which is annoying. Cause I, I wish I could just say like all countries are allowed, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the buy now controller and we're going to add this in probably on the outside of the line items. So next to like our mode payment, shipping address collection, make sure to add a comma to where this will cause error. And then what was the key? It was called allowed countries. And it says an array of enums. You say allowed countries, put some array brackets. Oh, the problem is I really want to support like a lot of countries, right? But I wish there was a way to do that. Let's look it up. Support all countries shipping options. Stripe. Let's see if there's like a, is there possible to provide conditional shipping options? I'd like to offer international shipping. Is there a way to make shipping options conditional? So it's available in all of these countries. That's like, it's available in Nigeria. That's kind of crazy. What countries is it not available in? That would be a good question. Like there's only, they only support 46 countries, but how many countries are there in the world? 195. So if you do the percentage on that, 195 divided by 46, multiply it by 100. Or wait, that's not right. 195 or would it be 46 divided by 195 multiply by 100 yo i'm going like math mode right now oh wait no 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 plus only 23 percent of the countries are supported guys by stripe okay now i get why you guys are telling me to check out something else for payments so like what's the best platform for payments for global use maybe like paypal braintree all right i'll definitely check out some more of these international payment gateways see i didn't even think about this paypal is available in over 200 countries but wait there's only 195 countries in the world 
Is my math wrong? All right, I'm getting kind of carried away. Anyways, I guess we can start off with US, but I really want to get like all of the country codes. So all supported country code enums for Stripe. I just want to see, does anybody have these? Oh, supported currency. But I don't know if that's the same thing as the country code. US. Interesting. Country code. Okay. Ruby array of countries Stripe Connect accepts. Oh, look, some guy already did this. That's kind of cool. So if we wanted to, we could just copy this guy's code. Although I only want, <laughs> the problem is I only want like the, the enum part. Let's see what we can do in the console real quick. Grail C. We're gonna take that hash and let's just like collect. I think that's one thing you can do. Key value and I just wanna only return the value. Haha, -ha, look at that, I got it. Then what we'll do, let's go and set it. Let's go and set this in the Stripe initializer. We can go to config initializer Stripe, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a constant. So in in Rails or Ruby, a constant is just an all capital uh, like thing. So I'll show you. Say like, let's make a constant Stripe underscore supported countries. So this is what a constant is. And then we can freeze the array, which means nobody will be able to edit this after it's done. And that's also better for uh, like optimization because the computer knows that it's not gonna be dynamic. So now we can take this and we could just use that in our Stripe checkout. Although for our e-commerce users, like not all of them wanna ship to every country, but for right now, I think in our app, it's cool to be able to support as many countries as we can. So let's put that in, allowed countries, Instead of just passing US, we'll pass in this constant. And then make sure to restart the server because whenever you're editing an initializer, you have to restart the server. Now let's go ahead and reload and let's try to buy now. Let's see what happens. So we have our shipping address. And as you can see, we have this whole array of the countries that we support. This is beautiful. I'm really happy with this. So if you were from America, you just click there. All right, let's go ahead and buy our shirt. Load shirts. Our address. Man, I don't even know. I'm just going to look up. I'm staying in this town called Arnhem right now. So I'm going to look up like houses for sale. Hey, maybe I'll buy a little house. Nah. Oh, that's pretty. They have some apartments. All right, let's go with this house. That looks pretty nice. It's like right in the middle of the town. Now, all I needed was just the address. Uh, let's go back, put our address, click yes. This looks good. Now the card information, put in my credit card. And then let's go ahead and pay now. Just like that, the payment went through. Thank you for purchasing. Your product will be shipped shortly. Hey, this is awesome. And then if we go into the Stripe dashboard and look at our payments, you'll see we have two payments. Now the first one doesn't have the shipping information because we hadn't added that yet. But the second one, if we click on here, we'll see that we have the customer, we have their name and we have their address. So as a seller, we'd be able to go and like print out a label for this. So for printing the label, there is integrations. I wonder what the best option is. Print label for Stripe payment, Stripe purchase. Let's see what the best option is for this. So some guy asked, can you print a shipping label through Stripe? And when is it safe to ship your item? It says, no, you cannot print shipping through Stripe. No, I think you can. So you can purchase label using pirate ship. So this is what's well, actually free shipping software. That's pretty awesome. 
Now I wonder if they do a Stripe integration. So look, they have an integration section. Mm, sadly, they don't do Stripe. It's annoying. How about just like a Ruby gem? Pirate ship Ruby gem. Loki, this might be good, although I want to, is it not open source? I can't tell. No, these guys are totally different. All right. I think we could look into that in a future video, guys, but this seems like a pretty good stop for today's video, or at least this current video. We were able to accept payments in our Stripe. We're getting the Stripe uh, the address that we're supposed to ship our product to. We also have the items right here, so we can figure out which item they actually purchased. And then on the user side, you have a nice success page, which shows that you purchased the item. So yeah, this is a great start. We now can go, as a user, we have a buy now button. We can purchase products. Yeah, this is a vibe. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. You you now know how you can set up a Stripe payment form inside of your app, accept payments for your products, collect their shipping addresses, and also support you know, as many countries as possible. Because as a seller, I know that I don't care what country you're in, although I might want to charge you more shipping because they might get it pricey when you're shipping overseas, obviously. So we can handle all of that and more in a future episode. But for right now, I hope you guys enjoyed this.